What happens when you leave a company you co-founded? Bonnie Fendrock knows that well because it comes with the territory in her career as a successful life sciences executive. Bonnie, welcome to the language of business. It's great to be here, Greg. Thanks for having me. Data indicates that CEOs change jobs all the time, but what happens when they have to leave a company they themselves founded? Well, first, it's tremendously satisfying to build a company from the ground floor up to bring it to a commercial entity and to see it thrive and continue to grow. So that's the first thing I want to say. There's nothing better than doing that. I do think that when you transition out of a company that you founded, there's a process that's important to go through in order to get to that place where you can really reflect on what you have accomplished. And I call it the wind down and rejuvenation process. So winding down for me um, and for many other CEOs who I speak with is a process of really looking at the successes that you accomplished as well as the lessons that you learned in building that company. Now is this a Bonnie Fenrock term or is this a well known is, sort is, of management dictum? It's a Bonnie Fenrock term but I think it's a practice that I see many CEOs engage in when they've built a company and they're thinking about what they're going to do next because it's very important to rejuvenate yourself for your next adventure and you can't do that until you really look at what you've done, what you've learned, and clean kind of your mind in order to get excited about that next journey. And what I will say about rejuvenation is that every CEO who I've talked to has a different way of approaching that. But it quiets the analytical mind and then you maybe engage your creative mind in travel, uh, in writing, in art, uh, in learning something new so that you can free yourself up to really get excited about your next opportunity. So today we're talking about transition. What have you learned? Well, I've learned that I'm very, very fortunate to be in the profession of life sciences. Life sciences is interesting because it really doesn't afford us the uh, opportunity to be self-absorptive. If you look around, there are so many patients in need. There are so many diseases that we still need to address. And clearly, our healthcare system is an area that needs many problems solved for it. So, you know, for me, I can't sit back for very long and say, I don't know what to do next. There's so much to do. It's a question of where I go next. You've now rejuvenated yourself. What is going to be your next move? Well, there are many options. Uh, and uh, we uh, have innovation going on in so many sectors of our life science ecosystem, from very large established companies who want to bring innovation to their walls and their uh, research corridors, to another startup company, or a linkage between. So I think the question, I will be in one of those spaces where uh, it's all around building, creating, and making a difference for patients. What sorts of resources do you rely on personally when you're considering moving on from company A to company B? Well, there are several books that I think are of high value to any entrepreneur who's thinking about starting a company. First, I think Noah Wasserman's book, The Founder's Dilemmas, is very important. It it's gives the it's data perspective yeah. around what really founders are getting into in starting companies and how they could really increase their success by looking at the metrics around companies that have been successful. Successful. Secondly, I think it's very important to look at a roadmap as to how to build your companies. And there are two writers that I think, and two academics who I think have addressed this extremely well. First, Steve Blank. His book, uh, The Startup's Owner Manual, is very important in addressing customer development, product validation. Business plan canvas. Exactly. Uh, and a very creative book, as well as Bill Olette's recent book, The Disciplined Entrepreneur. I think both together provide a very very strong roadmap for entrepreneurs uh, as they set out in a new venture. You did your undergraduate work at Wellesley College, you did your graduate work at Penn, and most of your career is consistent with your schooling. Would you personally ever consider doing something else? I'm at the, not at the point at this moment to consider a change out of life sciences. I love this field. Uh, I still have ambitions and uh, different uh, goals that I want to accomplish within the life sciences industry. But I also have a bit of a soul of an artist. And so maybe over life and time, I will take a little bit more of that artist's path uh, later on in my career through writing and painting. But for now, I'm still on a life sciences path that's, uh, I think, a very very exciting area in which to work. 
When do you think it's appropriate to leave a job, even one you're excelling at, in order to get an advanced degree, such as a master's degree? Well, you know, I recently heard a fabulous professor from Wharton, Richard Schell, talk about his new book, Springboard. And he really sent a message that at some point in your life, it's very important to assess how uh, achievement and satisfaction line up. And you may have achieved a significant uh, level in your career, but maybe not be that satisfied. And I think if you're at that moment where maybe you've achieved quite a bit, but you're not that satisfied, that might be a great moment to go and take a master's degree. And I see many of my friends and colleagues at this stage in life going to get that master's uh, to do some other pivot in a new direction. And it's been very satisfying for them. How about volunteering, time spent out of the office? How does that factor into your thoughts? Well, I love to volunteer, and I wish that I had more hours in the day. Right now, the majority of my volunteering is really around mentoring other entrepreneurs. I uh, feel that there are so many great scientists, which is where all of our innovation starts uh, in the biotech and pharmaceutical industry. It starts right in the universities, and we need to help those scientists get those ideas out to commercialization but often they don't even know where to begin you know business plan is not part of their language so I spent a lot of time through many of the programs that are here in the Boston area trying to mentor entrepreneurs to give them the guidance uh, and the vision and the view of where they need to go to build their company thank you Bonnie thank you Greg it was a pleasure coming up the business owners name is on the door is that a good thing but first, marketing a smart crockpot and an air freshener that no one wanted. Next, on The Language of Business.